Fans of the Horus Heresy, thank you very much for joining me for this review of Mark VI Corvus Armour by Forgewall. So, the final part of my review on tactical space marines uh, in my Iron Hands Force and the different uh, armour marks that they represent. And today we're coming to uh, Mark VI Armour, which is um, the last of the Armour Through the Ages miniatures that you can get. Um, of course, Mark VI Armour was followed by Mark Seven Armor or Aquila Armor, which is the um, 40k iconic Space Marine armor, um, but Mark Six was st certainly had a widespread use in the Horus Heresy, uh, and it has a fascinating history and position within the law in terms of what it represents as well. This is the latest Armor Through the Ages kits that were released um, uh, it, to coincide with the new plastic models, and they've got the hands attached to the bolters. Um, let's think how many kits I've got here. The actual kit itself, some Umbra pattern bolt guns, uh, Tigris pattern bolt pistols and equipment pouches. So that's three. Uh, a Mark VI command upgrade set for a Legion Vexler uh, from the Iron Hands Mark III tactical squad is five. And then there is a sixth pack of miniatures that's gone into this as well, uh, which are the helmets. And we'll take a look at those in a bit more detail. Mark VI armor has got slightly confused origins, we could say. Basically, it, it seems to be that, depending on the source you read, towards the end of the Great Crusade, there was a at least one type of prototype Space Marine powered armour being trialled by various legions. And Mark VI is one of these, but it wasn't called Mark VI at the time, it was originally called Mark V. And of course, this was before the Horus Heresy started and the enormous disruption and destruction it caused. Um, and we don't really know what this was, what the purpose of this suit's design was. And perhaps as a prototype, if a Horus Heresy had never happened, it would never have gone any further, and Mark IV would have been the standard. What we do know, firstly, the name, the Corvus suit, it tells us a lot about its origins, and prototype trials were being conducted by the Raven Guard. So Corvus, I mean, arguably, maybe it's even the only type of space marine power armor that is named after a a Primarch, Corvus Corax. Um, and there was some there was some politicking between different legions as to who would um, trial this suit, including the Salamanders and the Iron Warriors, but eventually it was in the Raven Guard who did it. And it was actually originally going to be called Mark V, but after, depending what you read, um, after the outbreak of heresy and the introduction of Mark V, it was then hopped onto the next Mark of Mark VI. Uh, another account I've read says it was going to be Mark V, but then following um, revisions to the design, it was relabeled as Mark VI, so in effect a mark got skipped. So, slightly conflicting viewpoints in the law there. Anyway, let's take a look at some of these miniatures. Now, so, Mark VI armour is the cleanest looking Space Marine armour in terms of surface detail. It's not the slimmest. Um, that belongs to Mark IV armour, but it's certainly the cleanest looking. Of course, Mark VI traces its origins back to the very origins of the Warhammer 40,000 game. Um, but these Forge World re um, of those Mark VI models are very beautiful uh, miniatures and really do the original design justice. So let's have a look at some of the features. So for the leg plate, so the, we now have a single armoured greave, so there's no separate knee pad. Uh, as we had in Mark IV, so that's just a single piece now. Um, we've got additional chest van brace that sits over the main armour, and then we have this distinctive uh, cabling that sits underneath it. Um, clean shoulders, clean forearms guards. Um, the molecular bonding studs retrain, retained on the left arm, and this was due to equipment shortages, again in the Horus Heresy, so cheaper materials being reinforced by these bonding studs, however that's supposed to work. And then we've got the same backpack as Mark V armor had, or perhaps Mark V has got the same backpack as design, was designed for this. I think that, that's probably the more likely option. Um, he's carrying an Umbra pattern bolt gun. So this is a re-imaging of the original bolters from the RTB-01 box set. Um, the design has changed. The ammo clip has been moved from um, here back to here. So it now has a forehand guard, so more of a conventional assault rifle layout than the original weapon. But otherwise, the detailing is very faithful. Let's have a look at another model. Uh, 
And here we can see the chest ca cabling more clearly. It's very distinctive. Uh, Nova Mark quite like it. Um, I've used Tigris pattern bolt pistols and ammunition pouches for these models. Um, I think the slim, clean look of those complement fits with the armor better than the Phobos bolt gun uh, Phobos bolters do. Of course, so you can always mix and match. You know, there's no there's no right answer to that. Uh, and then the shoulder pads, as well as having the molecular bonding studs, the rims have been removed, so they're completely clean. So I spent a bit of time talking about the armor, but I've not mentioned the most distinctive feature of Mark VI armor, and that is a helmet, of course. And the helmet is, has a very distinctive pointed nose to it, which is reminiscent um, of late 14th and early 15th century um, European medieval armor helms with pointed uh, with a pointed faceplate to deflect arrow fire, and that carrier. That sort of design has been carried through into this, although in the Mark VI armor, the pointed nose serves a very different purpose. Um, and if, you, if you've ever played the Dark Heresy Death Watch roleplay game, you'll know that Mark VI armor has got the most advanced auto sensors of any Space Marine armor mark. And that additional sensory equipment is housed in this elongated nose section of the helmet. So yeah, very distinctive look, quite unlike um, the other Marine marks. Let's move to another miniature. Oops. Let's have a look at the Vexler bearer. Now this uh, this is this is what I call squad civic, and this this will be brother sergeant civic. Uh, and the reason for that is Forge World a couple of years back produced a set of Raven Guard helmet upgrades with the horizontally inclined respirator vents on the nose piece of the Mark VI armor. And the first time that original. Uh, Road Trader artwork design of the helmets had really been captured in a mass available um, product and of course the artwork was drawn by John Civic hence why this is Squad Civic as a bit of a uh, bit of a tribute squad and to get these so I had to buy several packs of Raven Guard upgrades to get enough helms like that and I had to remove um, some chapter insignia from the forehead because these of course are iron hands uh, but the end result is excellent, and I'm very pleased with it. You know, to recoup my money, I just sold the spare heads on eBay. Uh, this guy's got um, has got a banner graft. So from the Iron Hands Mark III Tactical Squad, um, this has been a I cut this off one of their backpacks and grafted it on and bored through and stuck it on with a piece of wire uh, onto the Mark VI backpack to to keep the armor continuity there, but also have the cool uh, Vexilla design. So look at another guy. So um, yeah, these are these are very nice models. Um, when you're assembling these, a couple of bits of advice and tips on it. Um, the hands are attached. The hands are, are modeled onto the triggers and the of the bolt guns, and then you have a flat surface that attached to the wrists. This I found was quite tricky to assemble and a bit prone to breaking. So I pin all mine. Uh, pin all mine through to help firstly with the stability during assembly and then with the final strength as well. You get uh, quite a lot of these marines who are running. As a matter of fact, uh, in the set, which is five, you get five models, so I've got two sets of five here. You actually get, in my opinion, too many guys who are running uh, in this set. So what I actually did was um, on several of the marines, I heated up the legs and I bent them into a more static upright pose because having the whole squad running is not a look I wanted. I wanted a mixture of poses. You know, having a few running guys is good, but I didn't want the whole lot. So, and that actually worked quite well with these guys. And I'll show you a couple of examples of where I did that. There you go, you can see some of the detail on the Tigris ammo pouches. And you've got grenades as well as the pistols there. With these, you can heat, you can cut these pouches up into smaller units. So you've got a bolt pistol, then bolt gun, ammunition magazines. You can cut them up. With this one, I heated it up and bent it around the Marine's belt to get a better fit because they, they tend to be straighter than that. So there's a few tricks you can do with those to get a better fit as well. Uh, 
In terms of the law around Mark VI and what I've already said, um, so at the start of the heresy, depending on the account you read, it, this armour mark had just gone into full-scale production. We don't know why from that version of the account, because apparently Mark IV was going to be the, the standard armour across the legions. It had been trialled and used in large quantities by the Raven Guard. The Elf Legion had managed to get hold of um, a lot of examples as well. And if you read book three, there's a, there's a bit of commentary around this. Um, however, as the Horus Heresy started to move forward, this became um, where materials were not an issue and, st and production was working properly. This became the new standard for the Space Marines. And I think it's probably because it reflects that the Loyalists felt they were fully in control of the production and distribution. Of course, the traitors did get hold of some suits of it. Um, it, the Loyalists weren't entirely successful. Um, but if you, in a, in a couple of exa examples of the law, so some of the Nathaniel Garrow books, so it's an audio play where he goes, returns to Istvan three to find Cerberus. Um, but him and his accompanying two knight errant in that book, uh, in that play, are described as wearing brand new Mark VI powered armour. So that's interesting that the knight errant uh, were wearing this armour mark as well. Uh, and of course they are generally seen as having access to the finest and the best war gear available. Um, Mark VI is described as kind of... Mark VI is almost like a parallel form of armour to Mark VII and, and it's, it, it's still seen as being a generally deployed and used suit of powered armour in the 41st millennium by the different marine chapters. Um, and it is supposed to have um, fully modular connection points in the armour. So it was designed in such a way that any future developments of armour would be modular with the parts already made. And that, can, and that, I suppose, fits with the way that in 40k marines you get an assortment of Mark VI and Mark VII parts and you can mishma mish and mash them together uh, to create kind of a blended suit of armour. Let's have a look at the Nuncio Vox operator. So the, the Nuncio Vox was taken from an upgrade set, uh, the Mark VI Command upgrade set, uh, which is available from Forgeworld. You have to dig around in the catalogue to find it, but it is there. Um, yeah, so that look, he looks great. I always include a Nuncio Vox. Not necessarily always just to have a Nuncio Vox in the squad, but I like, I just like it, how it, the look it gives to the squad and just breaks up the style a bit. Here we've got an example of a running pose that I heated up and bent into more of a sort of walking position by bending this leg down. So it shows how you can adjust the poses on these guys. Yeah, but Mark VI is, um, I mean, it, it's a, it, it's an, it's a look of armor that certainly people who started gaming in the early years of 40K um, know very well. Um, although, you know, the Mark VII suit became, is, is a prominent suit these days and has been for a long time. It's really great to see Forge World revisit this classic armor design and to do it in such a, such a nice, such a nice way and capture the look of the original armor so well and also give us those, give us those helmets that we've never really had in quantity to be able to do squads of guys with that style uh, armor helm. If you uh, if you're a big fan of that original picture from a Rogue Trader um, art book. Interestingly, Mark VI doesn't carry, although its origins lie within the Horus Heresy and its development was affected by the events of the Heresy. It doesn't carry the same stigma as a Mark V suit uh, into the 41st millennium, and actually. Um, the retention of the molecular bonding studs uh, besides well it, it's a slightly suboptimal design however it's been maintained in a lot of suits because it's seen as a, a badge of honor and synonymous with the defense of terror so it's interesting that how the the circumstances of the suits participation in the horus heresy i.e 
you know, it was it was used to equip a lot of the defending Marines in the Siege of Terror, uh, has affected its long-term perception. There you have it, um, Mark VI or Corvus armor. Um, yeah, a really, a really iconic looking armor design for the Space Marines. You know, I, I love this armor design, I think it's brilliant. And I think Forgeall did an excellent job um, with re-imaging re it in these Marines. So that was the that was the final part of my journey through my tactical Space Marine squads. Um, covered marks two, three, four, five, and six. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed the journey. Um, I will continue doing reviews of Marines from my Iron Hands force, um, and I'll be moving on to some of the elites and the special weapon squads next. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I'll speak to you next time, and goodbye.